Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to day number 26 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to create a 2D drawing from your Fusion 360 file. This lesson is for beginners who have never used the drawing workspace. We'll take a look at how to create a base and projected view, how to add dimensions, how to update a drawing if the file changes, and how to export a drawing. For this tutorial, I'll be using a demo file that is located in your data panel. Open up your data panel by clicking the grid icon, then scroll down until you see the samples section. I'll double click on the basic trainings section, and then scroll down until you see the number eight hyphen drawings, and double click on that folder to open it. Now I'm going to use the connector joint file, so I'll double click on the connector joint file to open it, and then you'll notice that just above the toolbar, it reminds us that these sample files are read only. We'll have to make a copy by going to File, Save As, and then you can change the name or location if you'd like, and when you hit the blue Save button, it will create a copy of the file. Now that we have a working file, we can create our 2D drawing, and there are two ways that we can do this. The first way that you can create a new drawing is from any of your design files in the data panel. If you right click on the file in your data panel, you can select new drawing from design, which will open up a 2D drawing file in a new tab. The second way is to have your design file open, then go to File, New Drawing, and then you'll notice that you can select from Design or from Animation. So I'll go ahead and select from Design since this is a design file. You'll notice that anytime you create a drawing this way, it will first prompt you with the Create Drawing dialog box that gives you a few different options to set up your drawing. The first option is what the drawing will reference. You'll see that it defaulted to the full assembly, but if I didn't want a drawing of the entire assembly, I could uncheck this box, and then you'll see that I can select specific components. For now, I'll go ahead and leave that set to the full assembly. The next option, which is drawing, currently only has the create new option because I haven't created a drawing with this file yet. Next, you'll see the template option. I'm going to leave this to the default of from scratch, but it's important to note, if you find yourself creating a lot of 2D drawings, you can save templates to help speed up your workflow. And of course, this is where you would select the templates that you're wanting to use. The next option is standard, where you can choose from either ASME or ISO standards, so I'll go ahead and leave this set to ASME for now. Just under that is the units option, and this will default to whatever the files units were set to. But you can always change this to millimeters or inches. Last but not least, you'll see the sheet size, where you can change the dimensions of the sheet. So if you're gonna be printing this 2D drawing out or sending this over to someone else who will be printing it, then you'll want to make sure that you select the correct sheet size. I'll leave this set to the default 17 by 11 inches for now. Now before I click OK, I want to point out that the standards and the units options cannot be changed once you click the OK button. However, after the drawing is created, the sheet size option can be changed at any time. Now I'll click OK and you'll see that it opens up a new tab with the two-dimensional sheet. And as I move my mouse cursor around, you'll see that it has the base view pre-populated for us. If you want, you can change the orientation and the appearance in the drawing view dialog box. Selecting a different orientation will change the orientation of the base view as you'll see here with the preview. However, the style won't change in the preview, and we can always change any of these settings later on. 
So for now, I'm going to set the scale to one to one, and you can either change the scale by selecting the pre-populated options, or you can always type out a scale size. So let's go ahead and set this base view to front, and I'm going to click on the left side of the sheet and then click OK. Before we move any further, I want to point out that the drawing workspace is the only workspace in Fusion 360 that doesn't allow you to toggle back and forth between workspaces. You'll notice that the toolbar is a bit different and there aren't quite as many options as the model workspace, which is really due in part that there aren't as many functions that you'll need to use with two-dimensional drawings. Now to finish off our drawing, we'll want to create some projected views of the model, which will allow us to show some more orthographic faces. I'll click on projected view in the toolbar, and then you'll notice that you have to select the view to project from. Now in this scenario, we only have the one option here. So I'll select the front view, and then you'll notice that I can drag the mouse around and the view preview will change based on the position of my mouse. Now to set the top view, I'll go ahead and click above the front view, and then I'll set a perspective view by clicking over in the upper right hand corner. Then to confirm these views and to escape the projected views feature, you'll have to select the enter key on your keyboard. If you want to reposition the views on your sheet, you can simply click and drag the center point around. And if I do this for the front view, you'll notice that the top view will move along with it. Now, anytime you project orthographic views, they'll remain connected with the exception of the perspective, which can be placed anywhere. So you'll see that I can drag the perspective view around and I can place it anywhere. Now, a lot of times it's helpful that the perspective view is in full color. If you want to change the appearance style, Simply double click on the view and then it will open the drawing view dialog box. I can change this appearance to shaded and then hit close. And you'll notice only this view changed as this perspective is not dependent on the orthographic views. Before I go any further, I'll click the save icon. One thing you'll notice is that every time you create a drawing from a file, it will automatically add the word drawing to the end of the file name. I'll click save, and now let's take a look at changing the appearance of the front view. Now which appearance you choose really depends on your needs, but oftentimes it's helpful to show more details to fully depict the shape. I'll double click on the front view and then change the tangent edges to full length. You'll see that they update right away, and if we take a closer look, this line here better depicts the real shape, and it helps the viewer understand how these components touch. Just below the tangent edges option is the interference edges. You can select this option if your model has multiple components that intersect. When interference edges is turned on, an edge is displayed that shows where the components meet. Lastly, you'll see the thread edges option. Now by default, threads are not shown in drawings, but if you check this option, it will show any of the threads in the selected view. Up to this point, our drawing still isn't the most helpful because we have no sense of scale. We'll want to go ahead and add dimensions to the orthographic drawings. And this is the last major piece of the drawing workspace that I'll be covering in this beginner lesson. I'm going to zoom in on the front view and we'll take a look at how to dimension it. Now the easiest way to add dimensions is by hitting the dimension tool in the toolbar, or you can also select the keyboard shortcut letter D for dimension. Then you'll see as I move my cursor around, it will preview some dimensions for us. Now one way to create a dimension is by clicking on a line. So if I click the outer vertical line, I can create a dimension for that line and I can move my cursor around and I'll have to click once again to set the dimension in place. Now, after setting a dimension, you'll still technically be using the dimension command unless you hit the escape key. 
Now the next way to create a dimension is to select two points. If I click on the lower left point just above the fillet, and then the lower right point just above the fillet, you'll see that I can create a dimension for the width of this part, which is 2.25 inches. And once again, I'll have to click to set the dimension in place. Now using the dimension tool, you can dimension just about everything. However, sometimes you'll find it hard to dimension specific geometry. Because of this, the Fusion engineers have went ahead and made more specific dimension commands. If I click on the dimension dropdown list, you'll see that there are dimension commands specifically for linear lines, angles, the radius or diameter of circles, and a few others. I'll go ahead and select the diameter dimension tool, and you'll see that this tool will only work if I select the edge of a circle or an arc. And the benefit of this is that I don't have to worry about accidentally clicking on any of these other lines as I would if I were using the general dimension tool. I'll click on the innermost circle and then drag the dimension out and click to set it in place. I'll go ahead and click on the second circle and drag that dimension out as well. And once again, I'll have to click to set the dimension in place. If you're new to the world of CAD, including two-dimensional drawings, then you'll find that what you're doing with your model will help you decide the best way to set up your drawing. If you're working with another company that's going to manufacture the product for you, you'll want to check with them to see what standards they follow. On the other hand, if you're creating a drawing for fun or for your own purposes, you'll still want to follow some best practices for dimensioning 2D drawings. I'll link to an article in the description below that talks about the best practices more in depth, but here are three of my top rules that you should follow when dimensioning your drawing files. Rule number one is that dimensions should not be duplicated. For example, we labeled the right side as 1.5 inches, so I wouldn't put a label on the left side unless it were something other than 1.5 inches. Rule number two is to use the minimum amount of dimensions required to produce or inspect the part. Having unnecessary dimensions just makes drawings more cluttered and harder to understand. Rule number three is to never cross dimension lines. Now this one can make things really confusing, so be extra careful and pay close attention to where you set your dimensions. Now for the sake of time, I'm not going to add any more dimensions to this drawing, but I will point out that I would need a few more dimensions to fully depict this model. Let's take a look at two more things that you can do with the drawing workspace. The second to last feature that I want to show you is what will happen if your original model changes. I'll go back to the 3D file, then I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter Q for the press pull feature, and I'm just going to extend one of the faces out to the right. And I'll go ahead and save this by clicking on the save icon. Now, if I go back to the drawing, you'll see that it gives me a warning message that says changes have been made to the reference design. So to let these changes happen, all you have to do is click on the link icon at the top and you'll see that the model and all of these projected views are automatically updated. Now the part I changed wasn't dimensioned, but say that I changed this area that has the dimension with 1.5 inches. Had that changed, the dimension would automatically be changed as well. As you can imagine, this is pretty powerful and the fact that they're linked can save you a ton of time from not having to go back and edit drawings. Alternatively, if you wanted to make changes to the file and not have it affect this drawing, you would have to create a copy of the file in your data panel, and then the copied file would be independent and no longer linked to the drawing. Now the last thing we'll take a look at in this beginner lesson is how to export the two-dimensional drawing. If you want to print the drawing, you can use the keyboard shortcut Command plus P on Mac, or Control plus P on Windows, which will allow you to choose the printer and a few other print settings. Otherwise, you can export the drawing to three different formats. 
If you look at your toolbar, you'll see an output drop-down list at the far right. The first option allows you to export and save the drawing as a PDF file, which can be helpful if you need to share the file with someone else. The second option allows you to export as a drawing or DWG file, which can be useful if you need to open it up in another CAD program or another piece of software that accepts DWG files. Lastly, the third option allows you to export as a CSV or comma separated values file. Now this option really only works if you've created a parts list in the drawing workspace. And if you have created a parts list, then this export option can help you migrate to another platform such as an Excel sheet. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.